feel it's a, a positive step to, in America. It sets a precedent that no matter who you are, no matter what position you've held in the country, you are not above the law. I don't agree at all. He's been ostracized, he's been targeted since he's been uh, a presidential candidate, and it's not right. I think he should be locked up. I mean, I think 34 counts says it all. I think that, you know, obviously it's a huge process. He deserved it. He's what makes you say that? He's been accused of all of those other things. Got away with it. Finally, they got him. Just one time. They have tons of proof anyway. Uh, well, I honestly won't be happy until he's burning in hell. Do you think it's possible to have an impartial jury when trying to convict a former president or even current sitting president? No. You don't? No. So do you think that maybe this trial could have been unfair in certain ways? Absolutely. I think it probably was. Uh, I don't think he'll get prison time. I would be shocked if he gets prison time. Even with the politics being politics. I, I, I mean, again, like, if you have any money in this country, but he had 34 felonies, yeah, he should spend the rest of his life in prison if if he was a you know young black man selling you know, marijuana on the street corner in, in a state where it was le wasn't legal. So... It's hard to not feel jaded and feel like it's kind of funny in a way, like, like just having a president. Yeah, it's it's funny, like it's it, in a in a in a depressing sort of way. Hey, hey, what's going on, YouTube? This is Aaron again with American Interviews. Today we're out here at the Friday Night Markets here in Eureka, California, to ask the question: What are your thoughts on the Trump conviction? We're gonna find out. So today we're asking the question, what are your thoughts on Trump's conviction recently? I feel it's a, a positive step to, in America. It sets a precedent that no matter who you are, no matter what position you've held in the country, you are not above the law. He has the right to appeal it and what for, but this sets a precedent saying he can't get away if he truly is guilty. I think that they were probably true, but it was still just a witch hunt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, honestly, I think the powers that are be are trying to get the common people to fight amongst ourselves. This is a hot button topic, just like racism, gay pride, all of that stuff. You just got to push people's buttons to keep them from looking at the real truths. I think it's wrong. I think he's uh, been been scandalized by the Democrats, and he's he's in a fix. It's wrong. He's uh. Trump in 2024. I think he should be locked up. I mean, I think 34 counts says it all. I think that, you know, obviously it's a huge process. They had to go through a lot, you know, to really understand. Like, it was, it's a whole process, you know, but I'm, I'm happy with the results because I feel like he's done so many, he's done so much wrong. I don't think he's a good person and I don't think he's fit to run the country. So I'm glad that at least some sort of justice is being served. It's long overdue. You think so? Yeah, I think so. I think they have a good, solid case. Yeah. Cases, yeah. I haven't looked at the evidence in this one specifically, but... Um, what would make you say it's a solid case if you haven't uh, looked at any of the evidence? Well, I haven't looked at it in detail. I'm a lawyer, so I have a high evidentiary bar for anyone, even Trump, whom I'm personally not, you know, in favor of, but I'm not in favor of Biden either. I mean, I think in the end you have to be... Uh, like a little optimistic about it. I think there's a lot of, uh, I mean, obviously there's a lot of different political opinions, but uh, I think you have to be a little optimistic because I think that like, I think going into it and going into all the like different like s charges being put up at him and all the different like trials going on, you definitely think like, oh, it's gonna, it's just all gonna blow over. It's not gonna mean anything, but it, I mean, it's something like the conviction is something like it's, the end of the day, I feel like for me, the worry is like, what is it gonna do, and like, what is it really gonna accomplish? And I think a lot of like Trump's main fan base is is uh, so into him at this point that uh, I don't think that a conviction is really gonna dissuade them. And there's nobody that's gonna like see this and think like, oh, well now he's not my guy. He deserved it. He's what makes you say that? He's been accused of all of those other things. Got away with it. Finally, they got him. Just one time. They have tons of proof anyway. Tons of proof. Can you point to some of the proof that you're speaking of? Um, it's a little inappropriate. Is that okay? What's that? Is it okay if it's a little inappropriate or no? Whatever you, you know, want to do. the woman that he's been, I don't know, accused of raping. And all the proof they've had, the evidence, the DNA. Literally on his, uh, 
His clothes. Tries to hide it all. Just one of those rich people. They're all fake. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, I honestly won't be happy until he's burning in hell. But what the hell? Really? What? Yeah. It's a little harsh, don't you think? I mean, he's not really a good person. Just saying, he's done horrible things. Do you think the charges brought against him are a little extreme compared to some other things that other presidents have done? Some people are comparing it to uh, Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky or him paying off, uh, what was her name? I cannot remember her name, but he paid uh, some, a woman $850,000 for a sexual harassment case, hush money for that. Uh, do you think it's fair to compare those two things or do you think this is a completely different thing? I definitely think it's fair to compare, and I think in those other situations, maybe uh, they should have been more harsh on those other people as well. But I think uh, if we're looking at this particular situation, I think everything that happened to him is fair. Uh, I think a lot of times, I mean, we know the system it has a lot of issues, you know, and things aren't always fair. But I think in this specific case, he a thousand percent deserves the charges being brought against him. I would say that based on history, there may be a bit of a double standard here because in the past, those charges were found to be true and they did get off with a lighter sentence. The fact that Trump received this sentence could be conceived that way and that it was a sham trial, but I don't feel that way. I feel that they had enough credible evidence to bring these charges to him. Now, what happened in the previous case is they got off on kind of light sentences, and because this is still early in the trial, that could still happen here. Uh, no, it's not even close. It's apples and oranges. Yeah, Clinton is a scumbag child molester. Uh, you said Monica Lewinsky. How old was she when her and Clinton had sex together? He was twice her age. That's a child molester. Yes, she was willing to be, she was willing to do it, but he's still twice her age. That's still taking advantage of somebody much naive. How many 20-year-old girls, 20-something-year-old girls, do you know, that are emotionally well-balanced and, you know, well-rounded in the world? Not many. You know, they're still out there. They're just starting their free life out on their own. They really don't normally have a clue. And I think Hillary, or, uh, Clinton, Bill Clinton, you know, jumped all over that and took advantage of a naive young girl that was working in the White House. Child molester. Sorry. And then uh, Hillary, yeah, oh my God, don't even start me on her. She stood by him. She has been implicated in how many crimes to, uh, when she ran for, for uh, presidency? She was in court while running, just like Trump is now. But the, um, how many of those court cases did you see on the news every night? None. Trump, on the other hand, yeah, I don't personally like Trump as his personality goes, so it's hard for me. He does seem to get things done. He does seem to be liked by a lot of people out there, but I think we need a true American to stand up and become president and start changing things. And unfortunately, that's everybody's got to start at home. That's with your local politicians. Not even close. Not even close. Look, at they didn't come at Bill Clinton the way they came at at uh, Trump. It's not even comparable. I think the landscape of politics is so much different. And like back in the day, like Bill Clinton, hush money, that kind of thing, like, you know, and even like Monica Lewinsky, all of that, like, it's a different era and it got him to leave. It, like, it got him to resign. It got him like all these, all this stuff. And it really had actual, like, like he, he was done after that. And I think you, it's in a way it's not comparable because the current political landscape and like what you're allowed to do as a politician these days is like incre so much different. And I think Trump really changed that in a big way. Do you believe it's possible to have an impartial jury when they're uh, possibly convicting a president of the United States, no matter what president it may be? Uh, I would hope so. I could be an impartial juror for sure. Um, I've done it many a times, actually. I feel it's my duty to serve when court cases come. It would be, there is any jury, doesn't matter what the case, there's always going to be some bias. It's human condition. The point of the jury is to get a balance between those biases and make a selection that, even though there might be some skew, they balance each other out and can get a verdict that is appealing to maybe not everyone, but is a justified opinion. You know, that's a good question. I'm honestly not sure. I, I think that depends really, you know, um, on this situation. But uh, I to be honest, that that's not a topic that I've really studied enough to be, about to comment on that. But yeah, that's, that's fine.
I can't imagine anyone on that jury not having an opinion, but I don't know. There's some weird people in the country too, though, but, but probably not. No. You don't? No. So do you think that maybe this trial could have been unfair in certain ways? Absolutely. I think it probably was. But also, I think it was probably um, in his worked in his favor as well. So maybe it balances out in the end. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think it works both ways, but yeah, absolutely. After the sentencing, I believe that is July 11th, we still don't know exactly what uh, he will receive. If he ends up going to prison and wins in November, how would you feel about having a sitting president that is currently in prison? I think all I can say is that it's crazy that our country has come to that, that we would have a sitting president that is in jail and he's running the country. I mean, we, we got to have better options than that. That's, that's really the bottom line. I wouldn't like it at all. I would not like it at all because that is a loophole in the legal system that I feel should be closed up. That would be about as crazy time as this looks since Reagan. <laughs> yeah, nothing really is making logical sense. I mean, from the Iraq war to the Trump situation to COVID and our response. We're, we're terrible. We're, we're doing an awful job at governing the country, or they are, because it's not a we anymore. And I think that really is worrying a lot of people, you know, me included. For me, it's, uh, I hate to say it because I'm really against, like, being jaded politically, and I think it's really important, especially for the youth, to go out and vote and go out and, like, and, and vote, and to because that's how we're actually going to change things. But uh, it's hard to not feel jaded and feel like it's kind of funny in a way, like like just having a president. Yeah, it's it's funny, like it's it, in a in a in a depressing sort of way, in my opinion, at least. Yeah. Some people today have said that this sets uh, a good precedent for the country, saying that now nobody is above the law. Would you agree with those people? I don't agree at all. He's been ostracized. He's been targeted since he's been. Uh, a presidential candidate, and it's not right. Yeah, no, there's a thousands and thousands of people above the law because they're the ones that actually truly write the law. How many laws have been made by our own government right here in California, Gavin Newsom, that we never voted on, but yet they're laws. So who's really making these laws? Not us. So yeah, there are people above the law. So. I have to really think about that one. Nobody is above the law. Nobody is above the law. I would say that we have more of a problem with people being underneath the law. Um, you know, look at all the people still in prison for marijuana convictions. Here we are in a state and a county where that really matters somewhat. Uh, all those people who prosecuted them are now owners of these big grows. I think that's just terrible, it's hypocritical, and there's still people sitting in prison for trafficking. Um, just weed, not fentanyl. Or, but So we need a you know, top-down kind of uh, reassessment of the justice system, the electoral college, a bunch of stuff. Uh, the way we deal with addiction, community problems. But again, I think a lot of those things start locally, and Eureka, although it gets a lot of crap from the outside, I think is a really good example of a great community base where things happen and there is a rescue system for people in need. Do you think that he still stands a chance of winning in November? Even with the conviction? I don't think he has any shot of winning because even though his base is getting a good majority of the media share, if you look at the national polls and you ask the average citizens on the street, nine, I would say about seven out of ten of them will say, no, I will not vote for him. Because if you ask some of his supporters who voted for him previously, they are now switching sides. So I do not think he has a shot. I do, sadly. Um, I mean, I think that not only, I mean, the, the reality is he's always going to have supporters, and I feel like there's a lot of people that will just buy into his campaign no matter what he does. I mean, there's people I've seen people openly admit that. They're like, he could do anything, I'd still support him. So I think regardless of what he does, he'll still have supporters, but 
I know that my vote is not going to Trump because I just can't support him after all the bad things he's done. So, uh, but I do think, regardless, he's going to have support. But I think that as the left, we have to rally against that because we don't want our country to be absolutely screwed. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't think this will deter his base in one way or another. And I think if he wins or if he doesn't win, it almost doesn't matter. I think there'll be some civil unrest, uh, especially if he doesn't. Possibly another January 6th situation or? Right. I mean, uh, the right seems to be better at mobilizing than the left, the far right. You, you think so? I think so. Even with like the BLM riots and stuff like that, that was a pretty big big deal. I think that that was almost bigger than what the right has been able to put together. That, that's that's a good point. Um, we haven't seen anything like that, though, in a few years. So, Well, the Palestine protests. The Palestine protests. Good example. That's true. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Uh, the left seems to be in, in, in the way, on the wane, you know, um, since uh, the days of uh, the weathermen. So I'm not sure you're going to see the kind of enthusiasm, except for with the notice, except you noticeable exceptions of you know BLM and the Palestinian protests. Those were were too likely driven by mostly left politics. Uh, very successful protests, yeah. But also, yeah, yeah. So we'll see what happens. But I'm glad you're doing this. It's a good thing. Thank you. With the uh, with the sentencing coming up in July, do you think that he uh, ha there's there's a chance that he will serve prison time, or do you think that it'll be a lesser lesser sentence? I don't know. The general consensus seems to be that he.